For every year that passes, the challenge of climate change prove ever more daunting and complex. All over the planet, cities face a wide variety of threats, such as catastrophic hurricanes, massive flooding, and melting ice caps. To counter these and other dangers, architects and engineers from the Nordic countries have come up with new innovative solutions, both at home and abroad. While their methods may vary, their goal is the same, creating a new sustainable sort of resilience, not just protecting cities, but allowing them and the citizens to thrive. In this film, we'll take a look at five of these Nordic solutions. In the Nordic countries, a lack of water is hardly ever the issue, quite the opposite. Bergen, Norway is in fact one of the rainiest cities in Europe. But when tasked with designing the city's new university, Norwegian architect firm Snøhetter decided to see this not as a challenge, but as an opportunity. It is uh, an extremely robust school. All the surfaces are, are meant to handle the activities that are ongoing here. Outside our building, we have a huge plaza, and the plaza is actually an important part of the school's program. It is a space where we share art together with the city. But more than that, it also contains two huge retention pools, two wetland areas. So from our roof, which is 4,100 square meters, all the rainwater coming down is drained down to a huge tank. And from there off, we actually let all the water go out underneath the plaza area. Our project has met the budget. It's a little bit under the budget. So still we have added value. Meanwhile in neighboring Sweden, the western port of Gothenburg finds itself threatened by rising sea levels. In tackling the problem, the purely technical questions are only a starting point. Equal weight is given to the social aspects. Well, our project, Högvattenskydd uh, Göta Elv, uh, it's about uh, to protect the city, the city center, from uh, rising sea levels. Gothenburg is affected by um, western storms, so in the long term they, they want to have a, a gate at the entrance of Göta Elv. I'm an engineer, so uh, my, my first view was that, okay, this is very, very interesting and challenging on, from a technical perspective. But uh, during this project I've also become more and more interested in the social aspects of this uh, flood protection measures, because they will take so much space in the city and there will be such a visible object. So, so I think the social issues, uh, how, how you can use this uh, flood protection for other purposes as well, I think that is uh, at least as interesting. The Icelandic capital Reykjavik has set itself a goal, to become entirely carbon neutral by 2030. In the process, the city intends to restore its surrounding wetlands. We are aiming at to get Reykjavik carbon neutralized in 2030. This is one of the things we can do. We can stop the flowing from these wetlands. Some decades ago, they were digging ditches in the land and they were lowering the water level and then the carbon dioxide starts to flow from the area and uh, by heightening the, the water level again, we will stop that flow of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. We, we have a, a, a case study. The study showed uh, that we were gaining a lot of money by stopping this flow of carbon to the atmosphere. But of course it is not uh, money in the pocket, but uh, for the whole Earth it's, it's money. Helsinki, Finland intends to take a leading role in the global struggle against climate change. The first task is turning the city's abundant stormwater from a problem to a resource. Our water project is about managing stormwater in cities. The city of Helsinki wants to be one of the leaders in adapting to climate change and stormwater management is a huge part of that. The main idea of the filtering is, is of course that it filters out the pollutants from the urban surface waters. There is uh, three phases in this uh, system and when the rain event starts it goes into the filters. First there is a detention basin and which kind of stabilizes the water before it enters to the coarse filters 
and after that the water goes in the fine filter and then uh, outlet. So it's it's very easy. By developing stormwater management, we can build a city that is sustainable but also really cool place to live in with all the added greenery. I think we're developing a better city. Now the Nordic countries stand ready to export their solutions all over the world. One of them is Danish architecture firm Big, who is tasked with the protection and transformation of Manhattan, New York City. So the Big U is actually a project that came out of the Superstorm Sandy, which hit uh, New York, and a, a competition was held, Rebuild by Design. Uh, we came up with a solution of the Big U, which was to protect 10 miles of New York coastline. We look at the Big U as a kind of flood prevention mitigation challenge, but we don't want it to be an engineered solution that is only looking to build concrete walls all around the city. Uh, we want it to be something that can be social infrastructure, so that you have the infrastructure to protect the city, but you also lay over a social element that everyone in the city can enjoy. One storm caused $20 billion of damage in New York alone. And if you think about it that way, then a four or $5 billion investment is not that bad. In the years to come, new challenges will inevitably arise. And as they do, Nordic sustainable solutions are sure to become a much sought after commodity, promising not just protection from the forces of nature, but indeed an increased quality of life. <laughs>